He goes, you, you may not be the smartest person in the room, but you can outwork anybody else. And I took that to heart and I've always worked extremely hard. And he said, I can just really focus. He goes, I'm not thinking about, you know, this or that or whatever. He goes, I'm just thinking about playing my best game. And he said, even better, he goes, I'm having more fun playing golf than I've had in a long, long time. Hello, my name is Aaron Wexler, and welcome to another episode of Within the Game. Let's go. Within the Game is all about how to treat your craft and your life like a game so you can stay inspired, have more fun, and ultimately find fulfillment both in and out of your game, your craft, your life, and just be the best version of yourself. That's the whole idea for this show. Thank you to the listeners and the fans. And if you'd like to support the show, a great way to do that is grab a copy of my book, The Inspired Athlete as well as share this episode with anyone you think would benefit from it. Also, if you could give the channel a like and subscribe, all those things really do help out. Even if you just do one of those things that uh, that really helps. Also, please support my guests. And today's guest, long time coming. Today's guest is the one and only J.W. Ross. J.W., thanks so much for being here, man. Well, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. <clears throat> JW is an innovator and entrepreneur with an oil and gas background who's the founder of the new plant-based herbal suppu- supplement, Feel Free. Uh, Feel Free can be found at botanictonics.com and the IG is at botanictonics. Shout out to Megan and the team at Feel Free. They've been really supportive in getting this uh, this podcast episode scheduled. So Again, JW, thanks so much for being here. And the first thing I like to start all my podcast episodes with is this idea, this concept of inspired living. What does that mean to you? Uh, I would say that uh, for me, it's um, it's about being, you know, fulfilled. And, you know, this the byproduct of that happiness and i think you know what my what i've learned for me what that is is feeling like um being utilized completely uh that you know what i'm doing is as much as i can do uh and that you know what i'm doing hopefully is making you know some type of positive difference Mm. um it's, you know, if you'd asked me that question, you know, uh, younger in life, I would have given you a completely different answer, but uh, that's where I'm at today. I love it, man. I love it. You know, I'm inspired by you and your company and this product, which we'll talk about today, um, because I started um, my sobriety journey over a year ago now, and that's how I found you guys. And I stopped drinking alcohol and that was a huge decision in my life right and um finding you guys and you know uh researching your story and like learning about you you inspired me you've inspired me not just being on the sober path yourself but as an entrepreneur you know and so i appreciate i appreciate you so no, thank i appreciate you, for- you telling me that that's um i hear that a lot and that to me is more valuable than anything you know especially knowing what the value of sobriety is having spent you know a big part of my life on the other side of sobriety well you know let's talk about that um briefly share your story of of how you got to where you are now with the audience so uh i grew up in a very distant family to say the least um not a not a bad family or anything I don't you know didn't have horrible parents they just they were very busy and they weren't raised in a you know loving touchy-feely type families themselves uh so we were just you know we were always very distant and um I think because of that maybe other reasons I never really developed um I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin and I really didn't feel comfortable around, I didn't feel comfortable in close relationships or just, or just around people in general. Um, I always felt just a little bit off. Uh, so fast forward to about 14, 15 years old, uh, I'm introduced to alcohol 
Uh, and I, to this day, remember the first drink that, that I had. It was a scotch and soda, and uh, which is an interesting thing to start with. But uh, I remember the feeling that I had right after consuming that and going from feeling not comfortable in my own skin, not socially acceptable or so, you know, uh, uh, socially comfortable to feeling like I was the life of the party. And it was a love affair that, you know, lasted for, well, from 14, 15 to 38. Uh, so I had a good long run, but, uh, you know, most people know the story of it starts out great, then becomes okay, and then, you know, gets worse and worse and worse. The trade-off, uh, the, the ROI uh, changes dramatically over time, or it did with me anyway. Some people, you know, are fine with alcohol, but I'm not one of them. So, um, you know, it got to a point where it was taking too much away from me and my life and those around me. And I was headed to the point of, you know, I was going to kill myself and or somebody else in, in probably fairly short order. Wow. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I think for anyone listening that might be going through an issue with alcohol or know someone, um, that that's very relatable and it's very dark and, and rough, right. Um, going through that. And I speak from experience with that. Um, I want to, I want to offer a little bit more background, um, before we get into this product that you've created, mm -hmm. yeah. talk a little bit about your success. So we, you know, we explored the alcohol issue with you, but you know, you, you found early success. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, you know, my dad, even though, like I said, we had a very distant relationship, he, he put me to work at a very young age. And when I say he put me to work, really put me to work and he instilled a very strong work ethic in me. Uh, I remember him telling me, you know, at a young age that he goes, you know, you, you may not be the smartest person in the room, but he said, you can, you can outwork anybody else. And I took that to heart and I've always, you know, I've always worked extremely hard. So uh, instead of going to college, uh, I grew up in uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, instead of going to college, I went into the uh, oil and gas business uh, as, you know, a worker in the field, the very lowest form of worker, a swamper. And um, this was, you know, right late high school uh, and I really liked the business um, and spent, you know, I just basically poured my whole life into it, but I was able to identify how the game was played or how the game was being played then. And um, which was not all transparent <laughs> Uh, and take advantage of that. And by the time I was in my late twenties or mid to late twenties, I had already achieved, you know, way more success than I'd ever dreamed that I would have. Um, I had my own company, uh, you know, millions of dollars, you know, it was, you know, life was good. But with that, you know, my partying increased, um, Mainly, you know, alcohol is my drug of choice, but other drugs too. But, um, you know, and I went on from there to build, sell and build other companies. And, you know, had, again, just tremendous success. Yeah, well, congrats for that success. It's, it's, uh, it's commendable. Su success of what I thought success was then. <laughs> right, well, you know. So, okay. So that, that's a great segue to what happens usually when people find success, you know, there's a celebration and, you know, I told you that, you know, most of the audience for this show is athletes, entrepreneurs Yeah. for athletes, right? When we win, the first thing that we do is either crack a bottle of champagne or some, some sort of alcohol or beer, whatever it may be. There's a celebration component to an athletic contest. The champion gets to 
celebrate with alcohol, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's very deeply ingrained into our society. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation with um, a scientist in the UK early this morning about this, and it's, it's you know, it's amazing how deeply ingrained it is. It's in celebrations. It's in birthdays. Yeah. It's in you know, pairing wine with different food, and it's just you know, it's just it is what it is. Yeah. And, you know, I, maybe not so much today, or maybe I'm not so sensitive to it, but I remember when I did move away from it, I felt sometimes like people were, you know, uh, they were calling me out on it. They're like, you know, why are you not drinking? You know, what, what's wrong with you? And it, it, so it's, that's, you know, it just shows you how ingrained in society that it is. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. I mean, when someone decides to stop drinking for whatever reason, it can the reason really doesn't matter, but the decision made it does like create this like taboo question mark, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's another reason why I'm doing this show right now, this <laughs> this particular episode with you, because I don't think it needs to be taboo. I think it really needs it's a it's a conversation worth having, right, and worth sharing. Fortunately, um, I, I see that it's changing slowly. Yes. Um, yes. it's especially with younger people, younger people are, you know, more comfortable with saying, you know, I don't drink and a hundred percent. And there seems to be a trend going that way. Um, I see it, I feel it, yeah. um, you know, and let's, let's, I want to just share my journey with it. Right. Because when I, when I decided to stop drinking, which is over a year now, um, that's how I found your, this product feel free and your company botanic tonics. And I found you guys, I think it was, um, I, I'm pretty sure it was like someone someone else was talking about it and they were like, oh, have you heard of this product? And I, I was like, oh, no, I haven't. And then I saw it at a, a store and I tried it and I was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. And I for me, I like it for the social lubricant going out, you know, without choosing alcohol, I could use this and I could actually have a great time and kind of like feel like I'm part of the party, you know, so to speak. Right. right. You know, and that's how I found it. Um, so. Maybe you could just explain to the audience. Yeah, you what know, is so my, you know, you know, I having a long run of drinking and, and it got pretty bad. It actually got really bad, you know, DUIs and all kinds of bad things were happening. Um, you know, I had an intervention. Uh, fortunately, I listened to the the people and I went off to 90 day inpatient treatment, which I think you know, for me, it was very important because I, you know, thought that I had all these hundreds and hundreds of people working for me, you know, and they needed me every day. And, you know, if I left, that things would fall apart. And I had that whole thing spun up in my head. And the idea of walking away from that, um, you know, for 90 days and totally disconnecting, it just, you know, seemed crazy to me. But I, I realized that, you know, I really didn't have any choice. Like I said, it was either do that or going to lose everything. Yeah. So I, you know, I went to treatment. Um, it was a wonderful experience for me because it's probably the first time since I was, you know, 14, 15 years old that I'd not worked and I just worked on myself versus focusing on something external. And, um, you know, the treatment itself was great, you know, the one-on-ones, the group sessions, all of that. But the real light bulb moment for me was uh, we were, uh, it was a treatment center in Atlanta that specialized in doctors and airplane pilots, commercial airplane pilots. Um, and I was living in a condo with, with three doctors and we were watching TV one night and the movie, the a beautiful mind with Russell Crowe came on. And in that movie, you know, he's at the end of it, he's walking along with his arch nemesis and the guy goes, you know, you look like you're doing a lot better. You know, you're not, you know, having these crazy episodes. And he said, did you, do you still see them? You know, your imaginary. And he looks over and there they are and they wave at him and he, he kind of looks back and he goes, yeah, I still see them, but he said, I've learned not to engage with them. And it dawned on me that he's no different than I am because I've got this voice in my head telling me you can drink. And it's been doing that for years. 
thousands and thousands of times over and I still get the same negative results, but I keep telling myself it's going to be different next time. And I'm listening to that voice. And what it dawned on me was, you know, maybe that's the same thing. I'm not seeing something, but I'm hearing something and I'm acting on what that voice is telling me. And, you know, I can disengage. I don't have to listen to that. I don't have to act on that. You know, and, and it dawned on me, it was even deeper than that. It dawned on me that to that point in my life, I had believed everything I thought. I not only had believed it, I had acted on it. And I had this, this, where this came from, I don't know, but I had this real pride about making fast decisions that you know, I thought that meant you know you were smarter or more efficient. <laughs> and what I didn't realize is that, you know, after having studied neuroscience, is that you know, when you do that, you're only using your old reptilian brain. You're not using the new the new part of the brain because you know it's fight or flight. Uh, the new brains where all the data is, but it's a slow processor. And so I was running around making all my decisions on fight or flight mm. and wondering why I was having, you know, some problems. And I, I remember the book that I read that had, that talked about this was, was, this was something that was totally new to me. I didn't know this, which they taught it in school, but they didn't, or they, if they did, I didn't listen. <laughs> is that if you'll get an email in from someone that's charged, immediately fire a response off, but put it to side, come back the next morning and read the email that you got and read your response. And I started doing that. And what I realized was that I was totally reading people wrong. I was really aggressive, you know, I thought they were aggressive and then I got even more aggressive and I was just totally, I was totally, off base and I was turning, I was making problems that didn't need to be problems. And I still do that some today. I, I especially if it's important decisions, mm. sometimes I'll wait weeks and it's, it's fascinating to watch the process of evolution of what my response or solution is two weeks later versus what it was when I first thought, I had a solution. Uh, hmm. And that has been a very valuable thing for me. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for being a fan of the show. I really appreciate your support. And if you'd like to further support the podcast, please grab a copy of my book, The Inspired Athlete. Uh, the Inspired Athlete is all about my personal growth journey, my athletic journey, my spiritual journey, all combined into one. And really the idea is that um, the energy of the inspired athlete is within us all and it's up to us to evoke that. And uh, whether you consider yourself an athlete or a competitor or not, it's my belief that the energy of the inspired athlete is within us. Even if you just decide to take a deep breath and just move your body, that's the inspired athlete. So it would mean a lot if you could help support the book project as well as the podcast by grabbing a copy, uh, links to the Amazon uh, paperback version as well as the Audible um, audiobook version are listed below in the description. Thank you very much for your support. Stay inspired, y'all. Oh, yeah. man, that that's gold, right? Not to be defensive and reactive right away, right? With any yeah, You know, you think about it, you know, early in man's evolution, fight or flight was very important. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really about the only thing you had to worry about, you know, is to survive. So it served us very well. But today, that's still important, but it's not near as important as the latter part. And that's because things are more complex. You know, there's you're dealing with with, you know, situations that don't require fight or flight. Yeah. Or so. And um, that's made my life a big difference. Now, that said, you know, when I got out of treatment, my life was infinitely better. Um without alcohol. Yeah. But I still had the same problem that I had when I stuck when I was younger in that I didn't feel comfortable my own skin. I didn't feel comfortable going out in social situations. 
I would, I'd force myself, but I, I didn't have fun doing it. So I decided, you know, I either need to find something that will, will fix that, or I'll go, eventually I'll go back to drinking because I don't like this feeling. Right. And I went out in the market. I looked for everything I could find legal, you know, social lubricators or euphoria, what have you. And none of that really, none of the legal stuff really seemed to do much. Hmm. Uh, I also tried all the illegal stuff and all of that did too much because I was looking for something that I could do during the day before I go work out, you know, before, you know, I wanted to be able to, didn't want to get in a car and not feel like I could drive or I didn't want to wake up the next day and go, someone go, man, you shouldn't have said that or <laughs> whatever and, and feel good the next day. Yeah. And I couldn't find it. So I decided to try to make it myself and I started sourcing plants and substances from around the world and set up a lab in my house. And over a period of two years, I kept mixing different combinations until I came up with uh, the combination that uh, today is feel free. Okay. So let's talk about feel free. And, um, before you do, before you get into it and like, I want you to really talk about the actual ingredients, you know, the effects, but before you do all that, I want to share with you what, um, how I like it and how I like to use it. And the reason why I really like it is because I actually discovered kava a long time ago, um, in Hawaii. And I, there was a little kava bar, um, I was on the big island of Hawaii and I just loved it. I loved the social part of it. I love that there wasn't no, there, there wasn't an alcohol, um, component to it. Right. And then I researched it a lot and, and it was like this ceremonial, uh, uh, you know, plant that a lot of, you know, um, indigenous people all, all throughout South Pacific, you know, the South Pacific islands used. And when I was at that Cabo bar, I was like, man, this is like actually better than alcohol. And I, I, the effect was better. The feeling was better. There was really no cost to it. I didn't like, I didn't feel weird after, you know? So then when I found your product, I was like, oh, it's got Cava in it. Whoa, this is cool. So I wanted to share that with you because that's how I was like drawn to it. So yeah, talk yeah. about, yeah. Talk it's about interesting because, you know, Cava, uh, more so now than a few years ago, I mean, people are starting to hear a lot about it because there's other products out there like <laughs> us that are coming into the market. But when I first started, not many people, you'd mentioned Kava, no one knew what you were talking about. But Kava, you know, has been around for thousands of years, used by, you know, all through the Pacific Islands, uh, South Pacific. Uh, they didn't have alcohol but they used kava in the same way, exact same way that we used out, we use alcohol. And it also is just like alcohol is here. It's deeply ingrained into their society. I mean, any kind of celebration, the men in the evening get together. It's, it's not just a drink or a food. It, it's, it's part of it's part of the fabric of their life. And right. they talk about it continuously um, and it's an incredible social lubricant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's right. It's, it's incredible at reducing stress and anxiety. Um, it does it in a different way though, is what I, it took me a while to understand this, but after spending quite a bit of time in the islands with natives drinking it, and then also talking to people here that are consuming it, including myself, um, what I figured out was that alcohol is a great social lubricant, very highly processed, hard to dose, easy to overdose. When I say overdose, overconsume because it's so concentrated. Um, the way that alcohol works is it amplifies you. So you know, we heard the term liquid courage and all that. It, it's true. It, it makes you louder, more boisterous, you know, more confident, all of that. Um, and you can see that if you get into a bar with everybody drinking, 
and watch as they keep consuming, the noise level goes up and up and up and up. And, you know, if you're in the right crowds, you know, somebody's going to get into a fight, you know, somebody, you know, there's going to be, you know, somebody's going to pinch somebody's ass. There's going to be, you know, it makes people drop their inhibitions. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they become more social. Uh, some in negative ways, but more social. Kaba does makes people more social, but it does it in the opposite way. It actually quietens people down. Right. Um, they, what I think is it, it, it turns down the noise in inside of you. It lowers the ego. Um, and then when that happens, you automatically then really connect with everything around you. Mm. Now you're really listening to what everybody's saying. You really care about what they're saying. It, it, it opens, and I hate kind of hippy dippy, but it kind of opens the heart. Yeah. And you really then can have meaningful conversations and really be into it uh, with people around you, even people that you just, you know, uh, that you don't know that well. Right. Uh, so, what I figured out is that that's a much better way to accomplish the same thing yeah. than using alcohol. And, and you see that in the societies that are, there's, you know, that are the islands that are what I call Kava forward. There's very low rates of, of violence, crime. Um, people are a lot, seem like a lot happier. And then you go to the islands that are alcohol forward and they're just the opposite. Yeah. Um, and it's the same people. I mean, right. it's not like it's different people. It's the same people. Even beyond that, there's a couple islands that I'm aware of that were Kava forward, went to alcohol forward. They then banned alcohol and went wow. back to Kava be because of all the social problems that they were having. Wow. So um, my hope is that we see more and more Kaaba here because I think it's a wonderful thing for the individual and for society. Yeah, a hundred percent. Me too. So let's, let's get into the product. So I, I want to make sure that the audience knows that the product that we're going to talk about is the one that I really like, which is your, your new formula one, um, which doesn't have Kratom. Am I correct about that? that that's correct. Yes. Yeah. So the, you had uh, the classic version that has Kratom, you know, and like, there's a whole, there's a lot, that we could talk about in terms of Kratom and you've already talked about it a lot on other podcasts. So I would yeah. encourage people to go check out, you know, JW Ross on other podcasts. He he speaks extensively about Kratom. I would like to focus on this, this particular um, product, which doesn't have Kratom and it actually has lion's mane in addition to the Kava root. And uh, I really like it, you know, and I was hoping you could kind of go into how you created this and, you know, yeah, just go into this product. So, yeah. So, you know, we created the, as you said, the version that was uh, 10 to 1 Kava over Kratom. Uh, and it is done extremely well, you know, way beyond what anybody would have thought. Um, but, you know, there's a, like any, any substance, there's, you know, there's a certain segment of people that Kratom's not, doesn't work for them. Right. When I say doesn't work, you know in various, you know, ways. It either doesn't work for them or it works too well for them. Um, so I had a lot of people saying, you know, I really like the feel of this mm -hmm. and I like what it's doing, but, you know, I want a version without the Kratom in it. So I went to work trying to figure out how to mimic the, the feel and effects of Kratom. And uh, again, very long process. Hmm. Uh, but I finally found a group of other substances when mixed together in synergy with the kava that we use that give a similar feeling. It's not the same. Um, I would describe the, the new version as more energetic, uh, less euphoric and more energetic. Um, I actually really like it. I use, that's what I use like before I go work out. 
Mm. Uh, I'll use the old version like in the evenings or on the weekends or whatever, but for, you know, crushing stuff during the week, uh, the, the new version is my go-to. Thank you to new sponsor of the show, Stretch Life, located in Manhattan Beach, California. Stretch Life offers assisted stretching for anyone who wants to enhance their flexibility practice. And if you're like me, muscle tightness is something I deal with on a daily basis, whether I'm in the gym training or out on the beach playing beach volleyball or even sitting here doing this podcast. Uh, it's, it's a challenge to make time for the daily stretch routine. And so I've been working with Amir over the last couple months over at Stretch Life, and um, I can tell a big difference in the way I feel. I have more range of motion, I have more energy, more muscle control, and just overall less pain. Uh, Stretch Life is offering Within the Game listeners 50% off your first session. Just mention Within the Game when you book online or, or when you call in for the discount. And also, if you do not have access to the Stretch Life studio, but you still want to learn more about how to enhance your flexibility practice, Amir is offering a free 20-minute phone call um, where he can share specific stretches and other specific tools that can help you. So visit stretchlife.com, that's Stretch Life spelled with a Y, to book your first session, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, and and same with me. And so let's talk about the benefits. Um, first of all, uh, I really like how you put first and first serving half the bottle, second serving the other half the bottle, because for anyone listening, <laughs> you know, um, all you need is a little bit. You don't need a whole bottle. You just need a like half or even less. Sometimes I've heard you talk about this in other podcasts, maybe just a little sip or even a third. And for me, you know, I take half and I told you the way I do it is I mix a little soda water in there, kind of dilutes it just a little bit. Yeah. And that really works for me. And the benefits that I'll share and then I'll, I'll ask you about the benefits, you know, to keep going, um, you know, on what, whatever benefits that you, you've discovered for you. But for me, the benefits have been like, you mentioned flow, you mentioned heart opener, you mentioned focus. Like for me, it, the lion, I'm so glad you put lion's mane in there because I've discovered lion's mane and it's really been helpful for me with it's, focus. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Just, but, but for, for straight focus and being task oriented, you mentioned before working out, I don't take a lot of pre-workout cause I'm not big on like big excessive amounts of caffeine, but like a little bit of caffeine and a little like lion's mane helps lock me in. And I think there is a little caffeine in here with the cola. There is. We, uh, we use cola nut, uh, yeah. which is, a uh, it's, it's an interesting natural, you know, source of caffeine. Yeah. So, you know, all those things really help um, for focus for me. And then, you know, every once in a while, I'll take it before I work out or I'm going to do something strenuous and it, it helps kind of lock me in. Um, go ahead and talk about benefits for this particular uh, this particular product. Yeah, I, I would say I echo exactly what you said. I use it pre-workout. I use it, uh, you know, I'm 61 years old now and I kind of start flagging out early mid afternoon, you know, after, cause I start really, I start at 4am every morning. So, uh, I'll use a little bit of it, you know, about one thirty, two o'clock in the afternoon. And it kind of resets me to, you know, to, uh, keep the day going strong, but yeah. it makes a, it makes a huge difference in my life. I mean, and we have a lot of other people reporting the same. Yeah. I mean, and just to go back on the Kava for a second, it kind of brings this easy sense of joy that I really yeah. like, you know? Um, are there any drawbacks? Yeah, actually with Kava, they're not. I mean, Kava to me is one of the safest things out there. I mean, if you Google, you'll see some stuff about, Ooh, Kava and your liver and this and that, but that was all around some contaminated, uh, Kava that, uh, uh, wound up in Germany, uh, you know, no different than romaine lettuce. I mean, if romaine lettuce is contaminated, it's not going to be good for you. But yeah. Cobb itself has been used by millions of people for thousands of years with no real issues. And if you go, even if you go into the FDA's uh, fears and care safety, uh, uh, safety databases, um, you'll find virtually no instances with Cobb. Uh, way more like with caffeine and sugar and other things that, you know, that are socially accepted. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about a few things here. Have you ever done any studies that show that it, it helps with burning fat or gaining muscle at all? Uh, 
not with uh, gaining muscle, but I do know that uh, we've had a lot of people report it, it, it suppresses the appetite a little bit. Uh, it does for me anyway. And, you know, people report, uh, you know, weight loss, you know, uh, becoming leaner, basically. Yeah. Uh, so not in like a clinical setting, but like just. No, uh, no, no, nothing in a clinical setting. Okay. We do have, uh, we actually started uh, a few months ago, our first clinical study uh, on, but this is on the the prior, uh, the old, the classic version. Uh, gotcha. We should have the results of that by year end. It's, it's two things. It's safety and it's um, cognitive function. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And anything about sleep? And, and before you answer, I'll just tell you, when I take kava, actually, my sleep is a little bit deeper and better. I wake up a little bit more refreshed. One of the biggest things about kava is is how well it makes you sleep. Yeah. Um, not just sleep, but the dreams that you have. Yeah. Vivid dreams. I mean, yes. I... And I know they say we all have them every every night, but you know, for the longest time in my life, I don't remember having dreams. I mean, I wake up in the morning, and of course, I really wasn't sleeping that well either when I stopped alcohol. Um, it's a big change in body chemistry, <laughs> but totally. uh, since I started doing kava, I sleep like a baby, and I yeah. have incredible dreams. Dreams that yeah. I wake up and, re and remember. I mean, it's, 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 you know, dreams are uh, kind of like the icing on the cake, I think. <laughs> I like how you said that. And for, uh, for someone like myself who has experienced really intense insomnia, um, it's been awesome to get that great night of sleep, you know, and I, I attribute it a lot of the times to, you know, having some kava. Um, so I appreciate that. What about use over time? Uh, yeah, you know, it, on sleep, though, it, it's I don't think until recently I've appreciated how important sleep is. <laughs> right. And and I, I don't think it's a society that we have. I mean, I think we were we were just the opposite. We were told, oh, you know, they were, we were glorifying the person that sleeps four hours, four hours a night. Totally, totally. And what what the science is showing us now is that that person's not going to live as long. You know, we we need that sleep and it's not just about sleep, but it's also about deep sleep. Totally. Um, we have a, a lot of athletes using our product, uh, professional and amateur athletes. And a lot of those guys, you know, are very serious about tracking everything, including their sleep. And it's pretty amazing. Some of the reports that we're getting back as far as the improvement in sleep duration and quality using feel free versus not. I, well, actually that's great segue to my next section, which is specifically for athletes. Um, yeah, there you go. Cheers. Yeah. Um, so with this new, the new version that we're talking about here with the lion's mane, you even have rhodiola in mm -hmm. there as well. Could you, could you explain that for a second? Rhodiola? It's, it's similar to the lion's mane. It's, you know, for focus and cognitive. Cool. Um, so dive into the athletic part of this journey. Um, I know you, I know there's been some like official tonic of like these big organizations, these big schools. How did that yeah, come to the you? Official tonic of uh, University of Florida and the University of Texas. Um, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating because that's not what I made it for. <laughs> mm. you know, I made it for, for me, for an alcohol replacement. And then actually when I made it, I wasn't planning on commercializing it. I was just doing it to try to solve my own problem. Um, but what I found is I started using it more early in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed that, you know, I was getting a, a lot more shit done. I found that, you know, even like working out, I could do it before I worked out and I could just, you know, I could do way more than I could without it. Uh, that got out, you know, other people started experiencing the same things. And I mean, like the last Olympics, we had three 
athletes that were using it, two of which medaled. Oh, wow. We have probably, I know of at least 60 or 70 different professional football players that are using it on a regular basis. Interesting. Professional golfers, um, you know, on and on and on. And, and it, I had a golfer the other day. He's, a, I, I, he's, I asked him if I could mention his name, but he said, no, he's one of the best golfers in, in the sport. And he said, he goes, I just find, he goes, I take it. And he goes, and I'm in the zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like, um, energized, but I'm also relaxed yeah. at the same time. And he said, I can just really focus. He goes, I'm not thinking about, you know, this or that or whatever. He goes, I'm just thinking about playing my best game. And he said, even better, he goes, I'm having more fun playing golf than I've had in a long, long time. Yeah, man. And I was like, that is, that's gold. That's cool. And that's, you know, talking about flow, right? I mean, I love talking about flow. I love asking people about flow. Uh, one of the things I ask a lot of people on this show is, is, is flow something you can practice or do you just find yourself there? How would you answer that? Um, I think that that's something that's very hard to practice. <laughs> I mean, it either is or it isn't. Yeah. Uh, I think you could try, but, you know, I don't know that you can just will that on yourself. Right, right. Well, you know, taking this definitely helps me at least try to get there a little bit. Um, so I, I kind of, I think... Personally, I think you can practice it. I think you can set yourself up doing mindfulness I, work. Probably, but maybe so. I, the thing about flow to me is that you don't really know it until after. True. You True. look back and you go, man, I I just put two hours into something and I just killed it. Yeah. It's not like you went into it intentionally saying, that, you know, this is how I'm going to, this is the state I'm going to get to. It just, it happens. No, that's true. I, I, I'd agree. I'd agree and what's, what's what's fascinating to me is I've been doing feel free for four years now on a regular basis. And it still does that for me. I mean, it's still, and I'm not consuming any more than I was four years ago. Um, and it's, there's something that's uh, very interesting about Kava. Uh, and there's no science to back this up, but there is quite a few articles out there about it. And the locals talk about it is it's a, there's a reverse tolerance. Yeah. Uh, so that the longer you take it, the better your body gets it processing it. Yeah. Uh, which if that is true, that would be the only substance I know that's that you don't have just the opposite effect. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, so, okay. So if an athlete or a coach or even a parent of an athlete is listening to this and they're like, that all sounds great guys, but you know, immediately let's talk about like FDA compliance and you know, uh, like maybe a little addictiveness or I know right. there's a lawsuit yeah. that's let, let's, let's get into all that stuff. So let's, so, let's, yeah. So, and, and remember, sorry, remember it. Let's talk about the new version. Okay. Yeah. The new version, there's nothing around that. The, okay. the lawsuit that you mentioned is around the old version and it's specific to Kratom. Yeah. Um, you know, Kratom is, um, I think Kratom is a wonderful substance um, if used uh, in moderation. Uh, it's not, if it's not used in moderation. Sure. Really, probably more so. What's happened with Kratom is, is that, um, you know, Again, in Southeast Asia for thousands of years, they've used Kratom, no problems, uh, used by workers, um, very similar, like they'll have these roadside stands with bag with a straw in it, and they, it's a tea they make out of the full leaf, mm -hmm. which is what we use. Um, unfortunately, here in the U.S., we've taken it and made extracts out of it, similar to like you take coca leaves and make cocaine <laughs> and turn it into something totally different. Right. Uh, and that's created a lot of negativity around it. And we got caught up in that, even though we don't use the, the ex, uh, Kratom extract. Um, but the new version, there's nothing. I mean, you know, Lion's Mane, Rhodiola, Colonna, and Kava. I mean, there's no real, you know, 
There's no real issues with that. It's not going to, there's no drug testing around that. I mean, it's not going to pop on a drug test. It's not banned by anybody. Uh, they're, you know, they're mainstream ingredients. And FDA compliant? We are uh, FDA registered. Uh, we have our own production facility and we've been through complete audit with the FDA. Okay. Okay. And just to be transparent, um, the classic formula, please for, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I've researched is that there was some person that took 10 in one day. And then so we have a, a lawsuit over that. Uh, the individual, um, you know, which I really feel for him because it sounds like he's uh, an alcoholic or, or trying to be a recovering alcoholic like me. Um, he had been in and out a couple rehabs, uh, supposedly stopped drinking, started drinking, feel free, got up to drinking like 10 of them a day, even though we say don't drink more than one a day. Right. Uh, he went back to drinking and on a serious uh, basis. And then he checked himself into rehab and then he filed a lawsuit against us saying that we caused his relapse. Right, right. Which, you know, I, people people talk about addictiveness and all this. And, and I've spent a lot of time, you know, having a personal history in, in substance abuse uh, and also seeing how opaque that space is. I've I'm spending the majority of my time right now working on that. And we're engaged with a couple of the top addiction specialists in the, in the country. And I think what, what I'm wanting to do and what we're, what we're currently doing is some of the science that still needs to be done around it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also, you know, people, is it habit forming? Is it addictive? You know, there's these different terms and are like, well, what's one mean versus the other and dependence. And uh, the reality is, is that, Anything that changes your mood for the better is habit forming. Yeah. yeah. I don't care if that's sex or exercise or sugar or caffeine or whatever it is. If it rewards you, you're automatically going to want more of that. Yeah. And yeah. you're going to want it, you know, you're going to want it all the time because it's doing something for you. It's only the stuff that doesn't do anything for you that's not habit forming. And that's not really the question that we should be asking because everything is that that's rewarding. Yeah. What we should be asking is, is that if I do this on a regular basis, is this going to hurt me physically or is it going to create social issues? And that's what I think the focus should be on. Uh, so what we're working on putting together is a landscape and no one's really done this before of here's all your choices, you know, alcohol, you know, this, that, whatever. And here's the relative profile of each one of them. And, you know, the uh, habit forming profile, safety profile, and put that in a graphic to where then people can say, you know, I get, you know, I'll choose which one I want based on yeah. the information with right. no bias towards any certain substance or anything else. Just have it, let the scientists, you know, use the, the data that they have and put it out there. Yeah. Um, and we hope to publish that within the next couple of months, which I think is going to be it's amazing to me that no one's ever done it before. I, I, mm. I know why they haven't, but it's amazing that somebody hadn't done it. Yeah. No, I, I like that offering choice. Um, it, that's, what, that's what it's all about, right? Everything. We all have to make it. It's, about, it's about informed consumers. You sure. Know, and then let mm. consumers decide if they want to try one or more of them or if they don't want to do any of it at all. Now, is there a, rec is there a recommendation on how much we should have of this or is it something that you think it's better to spread out? Is it a daily consumption? Yeah, we recommend uh, no more than one bottle per day. Yeah. Uh, and we recommend no more than a half a bottle at per serving. Right. Um, you know, 
there are people that are doing more. We know that. Uh, but that's, you know, that's our recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. Awesome conversation. Let, let's just use a few minutes here talking about the entrepreneur journey, right? Because I told you before we started that that's, you know, part of my interest as a fellow entrepreneur, you know, someone who's created their own company. When I see someone like yourself, who's created this company and, and has experienced another chapter of massive success, I would, I would ask you to kind of talk about that. You know, what are some of the keys to your success? Um, I think it goes back to what I said in the beginning is, is, is that I have the ability to basically sacrifice a lot of other things in life. Um, when I make my mind up that I want to do something, I, you know, become obsessive about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't know that I'm, this is a great thing to be, you know, uh, sharing with people, but <laughs> because it's, it, it's not all good. Um, but if you, it, from my experience and from what I've looked at, if I look at people that have really done something, what I call extraordinary. Yeah. And normally they gave up a lot of the rest of their life. Uh, I was watching a documentary just the other night on uh, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. And even them, you know, it's Paul McCartney. He's like, people think that we got together and ooh, this magic happened. And here we are. He goes, what they don't know is that we spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours as young kids playing together and we sacrificed what kids normally do. And he said, we finally got good. Mm. And wow. he said, he goes, and then the magic happened. Wow. And he said, but the people don't want to talk about that first stage of all the work that had to be done. So I think that, um, you know, it's a combination of that. It's also realizing I don't know what I don't know. And that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's hiring people that are smarter than I am and empowering them to, to do what they can do. Because if you're building a company that's, you know, growing as fast as we are, you, there's just not enough hours in the day and, and one person can't do it all. Okay. So build on that for a second, because I just heard this amazing interview with Tom Brady uh, on the PBD podcast and he was talking about leadership. I would love to pick your brain about leadership because like you just mentioned, a, a lot of your success is, you know, based on the team that you've put around you. You know, how 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 would you describe inspired leadership? Um, it's about people can people can sense if you really are passionate about something. Mm. And if you're, if you're really, you know, if you're doing it for what we call the right reasons, um, and they, they like that, they gravitate towards that. You'll be able to get, you know, better people, uh, and they'll buy into it. And once they buy into it and, and they're, you know, you form, you know, uh, a team that's ready to go to war um it's amazing what you can get done and would you say that creating culture is a way for them to buy into it definitely so yes yeah definitely and, so. and how do you do that like like i really want you to break that down like how would someone create culture in their organization if they've never heard that before and they're like what does that mean um it means you know if it's, it's harder today because of everything being virtual, <laughs> but it's taking the time to spend time together. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, even when that doesn't sound like it makes sense to, to do it. Um, it's also about one of the things that I'm extremely, uh, that I spent a lot of time focusing on is transparency. Yeah. Um, I, I really appreciate that about you, especially with, you know, especially with a product that there's a lot of question marks about. Yeah. I really appreciate the transparency. 
and to the form and to the point of, you know, what I call radical transparency. And that's just anybody in the company can call me out for whatever they want to call me out, you know, call me out on and the same thing between all of us. And, you know, we, we discuss it and it's, it's not about, you know, getting mad at somebody or whatever else it's, it's, you know, here's my opinion. Here's your opinion. Yeah. Here's Joe's opinion and let's figure it out um, and have adult conversations and not beat around the bush, not sugarcoat it. You know, let's thrash it out and, People actually, it's amazing how rare that is. <laughs> I mean, when you do it at first, it's kind of, you know, they're like, oh, you know, what's this? But then after doing it for a bit, they're like, I really like this. Yeah. I like the ability that I like to be, to feel like I'm heard, no matter what level it is, that I don't have to bite my tongue and not say something when, you know, I might have something really good to say. Yeah. And even if I don't have something good to say and say it, I'm not going to get my head bit off or anything. It's just going to be part of the conversation. Love that. And what does success look like to you, J Dub? So, you know, before I got sober, uh, like I said, I had achieved what I thought then was success times a hundred or a thousand. And I remember, you know, sitting inside a 17,000 square foot house with cars and gardeners and maids and planes and boats. And I was miserable. I was just totally miserable, which, you know, weird thing to say, but I was, I think I was doing it just for the money. Um, and I didn't really care that much about what I was doing. I was just, again, I was doing it because that was the game I was playing. Today, to me, of course, it's about the money. I mean, that's what makes things work. Um, it's, you know, the, I remember this line when someone said, what's, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. You know, it, it or money is the root of all evil is what they said is that's not true it's the love of money that's the root of all evil money's money's important uh but it's also about as i said before it's about doing it for a purpose and i think even more important is is to feel like that you're fully utilized that you know when you lay down at night you're like boy i gave it my best and not you know uh, no matter what the outcome was and i you know I was, you know, talk about sleep. That's what helps you sleep is when you lay down, you're like, you know, I, I busted ass today. Yeah. And you quick to sleep and you're back up and away you go again. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the, the lack of the idle mind or the idle body is where problems start happening. And that utilization of energy would you say that's that's about fulfillment it is for for me yeah yeah, yeah. awesome and then, man and then yeah. the byproduct of that is 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 happiness right right awesome man wow jw thank you so much for sharing all of that um one thing i would like to say before we kind of close out is if you if you aren't already I would urge you to think about supporting some sort of organization that's fighting against alcoholism. I think that would really help um, to know that, you know, as I'm a customer or anyone is a customer, mm -hmm. they're also supporting the, the reduction in alcohol harm and whatever that means, you know, and, and whatever way that you decide to do that, or if you don't, mm -hmm. I get it, but I think I, I would urge you to do that because you are such a uh, player in this game of getting people to maybe make a choice. Uh, that's actually, that's a great idea. I feel like we're doing that with the product that we're putting out there. We're giving people a choice. Yeah. But actually I have not thought about engaging formally with some type of other organization. And I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Cool. Cause it's just, you know, obviously you're, you're, 
experiencing massive success. And I, as an, a fellow entrepreneur, I mean, I'm, I'm like, that's awesome. You know, I want to celebrate that. And at the same time, you know, this conversation is so deep on so many levels where there's so many people really struggling or know someone who's really, really struggling. And like you said, uh, you mentioned earlier that you, you were almost suicidal, you know? And so the, since that is so deep and the severity of that is so like, wow, like that's so intense, definitely consider, you know, that it, partnership. One thing that has been interesting about this journey is I realize now how big of a problem alcohol actually is. Right. Right. Uh, you know, you have people like me that, you know, we're headed for disaster. <laughs> uh, but then you have this larger wedge of people that they're not crashing cars or not losing jobs or, you know, but their life is not quite balanced. Right. Right. And, and they know it, they're feeling it and it's kind of, Ooh, you know, and that's a huge wedge of people. Uh, and I know that from the feedback that I get from people, uh, you know, that reach out to me um, and they're like, you know, is there, I don't want to not have something because I need it, you know, for whatever reason, social situations or whatever. But I also, I don't want, I want to be balanced in life. And I want, you know, I don't want to have any regrets about, you know, this or that or whatever, uh, or I just don't want to feel bad the next morning. And that's a big, big wedge of people. Totally. Um, and I don't think that I ever really appreciated how large that actually is. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, going back to the the sober journey that I told you that I'm on, um, I wish I started a long time ago on that journey, right? Now that I <laughs> kind of, oh, it, what, what it did for me really, you mentioned opening your heart or heart opener. Like that's kind of what, you know, saying no to alcohol did for me. It kind of, yeah. like my creativity went up. You know, I'm, I'm starting to play more music now. I'm exploring that side of my life. Um, it's it's really helped me with connections like this through this medium of podcasting, cool. you know, and it's just it's it's been a blessing for me, you know, whereas like for a big part of my life, it was just like, yeah, that's what you do. You win a game, you you celebrate with alcohol or, right. you know, you go to a bar. That's what you do. You celebrate with alcohol. Oh, one more idea I had for you, too, is I, I think you should partner with bars. You should you should have this accessible at night, you know, where that's, that's something that we're already doing. Good. Uh, I, we're just starting with that recently. But, uh, you know, my hope is that that becomes, you know, very mainstream so that yeah. people, when they go, you know, right now you have like sober bars and alcohol bars or not. I, I would like it where, again, that, you know, you walk in and you have a choice. I think that would be you get, awesome. You can get a alcohol option or a non-alcohol option. And and when I say non-alcohol option, it's not about something that looks like a drink and doesn't do anything for you. It's about something that, you know, it's not alcohol, but it makes you feel good. Yeah. Um, that's what people really want. And that's great to hear that you're already doing that because that's been my frustration for so long, especially here in Los Angeles, right? It's like when you go out at night, that's yeah. something you, you kind of have to think about. You're like, if I, if I don't want to drink alcohol tonight, well, I still want to go out and have fun, you know? Right. Um, are there other options, you know? And there's really not too many, but I guess more and more now there are. And I'm happy to hear that you are doing that. And last idea I have for you that I'm going to share publicly is I think you should think about starting your own, your own like nighttime experience the feel free bar, you know, where there's music and there's, there's like this, uh, it'll attract this crowd of people that are like creatives and they want to have a good time. And they want to connect, but they don't want to poison themselves. Yeah. We actually, um, we have a business plan for exactly what you're talking about. Cool. Uh, I've developed over the last six months. Uh, we've even got the brand mocked up and all that. And oh, very cool. We're thinking about, um, um probably second quarter of next year launching the first ones one on abbott kenny here in venice and one on uh, south congress uh in austin okay well we need to talk more because i yeah. love that i love that idea jw i really appreciate your time uh you before, yeah before we sign off just tell people how they can best support any websites and social medias i mentioned a few already but 
Yeah. So cool. yeah, the uh, the website is uh, botanictonics dot uh, com. Uh, you can just Google "feel free." Um, is the easiest way to to find it. Yeah. And then we're also uh, in approximately twelve thousand stores across the country now. Awesome. 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 I'll leave all that stuff in the description below. Uh, for the audience, thank you guys for listening so much. JW, don't go anywhere. For everyone else, peace, blessings. Stay inspired, everybody. All right. Thanks.